Hey, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be working on the DC low voltage electrical system in the bus. Basically, all the stuff that's powered inside here, lights, fans, bunch of other random things. Got a bunch of parts delivered. First few minutes of this video, we're gonna be unpackaging a few things, taking a look at what I'm going to be installing. If you wanna skip around, there's time codes down below and also the YouTube chapters feature if you're watching on a mobile device or a computer. But yeah, let's take a look at the progress that's been made here in the last week or so. And uh, I, uh, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Still got a long ways to go, but um, we're wiry close to being able to run around autonomously in this thing and uh, not have to worry about electricity and stuff like that. So let's see how the last week or so went. Okay, a few things have been delivered. There's a little voltmeter, surface mount one. It's kind of interesting when they say mini and it looks a little bit bigger on the listing, but I don't know. I mean, probably fine enough. Meh. And then uh, we've got some switches. These were also significantly smaller than the measurements led them to believe. But anyways, that. And then we've got some, I think these are 30 amp weatherproof fuse holders. These are going to be feeding one of the DC power circuits. And I've got some, what is this, 12 gauge? Yeah, 12 gauge two conductor marine wire. It looks a little bit like Romex, but it's flexible. That's gonna be feeding our low voltage system inside the bus. And then we've got a whole bunch of fuse holders. Actually, I think these are micro fuses. Yeah, fuse holders and fuses. Then, oh, piano hinge. That's gonna be for the weather flap that's going to cover the lift hole there. Hopefully gonna be getting that done here soon. Oh uh, yeah, that's some nice stuff right there. It's got good spacing, so you don't have to put the screw holes too close to the edge. But yeah, this is 12 inches. I think there's three pieces of this in here. Oh, only two. Meh, whatever. Can always order more later. And then this, we got a few things for ventilation. I've got an Atwood bilge blower mounted underneath. It's actually in the corner of that light compartment right there. And when you turn it on, it pulls air from basically outside, which is coming through here and up into the front half of the HVAC by those two windows. So if I need some ventilation in there, I can fire that up. But the problem is with that right now, it's extremely loud and pulls quite a bit of power. So we've got the motor governor. This is a PWM controller. And supposedly this will allow me to change the speed on that thing. But the other problem I've been having is I had to plug it off because it was causing drafting. So I found one of these guys. This is a draft powered or anti-draft floppy dealy thing. Anyways, you stick this on there. The spring tension is a little bit heavier than I thought, but I think we'll be okay. But this will seal that off when it's not in use because yeah. Now we got some three quarter inch drywall screws, which actually those are gonna go with this. The awesome office supplies. I've been working on getting everything mounted in here or in the bus. Little wire baskets to hold some stuff. They were designed for mounting on lockers, so they've got a bunch of neodymium magnets on the back. Um, I'll probably just pop those off and drive screws through it. But this is going to hold assorted things on the desk in there, so stuff's not sliding all over the place and the bus moves around. Oh, and I got a new hoodie over there because the one I'm wearing is a little bit larger than it needs to be. <laughs> Well, we got a break from the rain and I managed to get out here and install some thingies in the process of installing the low voltage input up into the bus here. I got some of that, actually, I guess I showed it in the clip earlier. This is that 12-2 marine wire, double jacketed, great stuff. So what we've done is installed a disconnect for the low voltage system here. And we're basically pulling off of this side of the batteries just in case for whatever reason these things trip because the inverter freaks out. That way I still have power or light if I need it in there. But each leg of this is fused and 
I went ahead and fused the negative side as well, just in case there's any sort of weird ground looping stuff or I don't know, whatever. But we got these cool weather pack, there we go. We got these cool weather pack fuse connectors here. Those things are all sealed, got everything all zip tied down. Uh, disconnect switch here. I went a little bit overboard with attaching this wire. Um, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't rubbing on the metal as I'm driving down the road. So pretty much at no point is any of that wire touching the metal. From here on up into the floor, we'll do something about this later. I might do some wraparound conduit or something. This is our temporary input from the grid right here. And this is our temporary input to the inverter. As you can see, that's just an extension cord that's been put in there, very temporary. Our output feed though is pretty much as it's gonna be. I need to get some strapping and attach this down. It's fairly rigid, but if we drive around, there's a very high probability that something here is gonna snap off. So that needs to be locked down. But uh, yeah, we got our low voltage out. It's running up in here. So I'm gonna go inside and get to installing fuse boxes. We're gonna split it off into a 24 volt feed and also a 12 volt feed with two separate fuse boxes because some accessories I'm running are gonna be 24 and some are gonna be 12. So anyways, yay. Okay, so I don't always film things when they're being delivered from the Amazon wish list, but I had to film this one. It is wrapped up and it says, enjoy your gift. <laughs> Excellent. Handy bag to put things in later. Aha, there it is. This is the Victron 16 amp, 24 volt Bluetooth enabled smart charger. Waterproof, so good for marine applications and all that. These guys really make some uh, awesome stuff. The cool thing is with this one is you can program it. So I can be sure that we're getting the proper voltages into these Odyssey batteries. Oh, and then the other thing too, um, water heater. Thank you to the person that sent that to me. It's a seven gallon tank, pulls around 1400 watts, something like that. Recovery time on it's actually fairly decent from what I'm hearing, but uh, yeah. And here it is. Sweet. Well, I'm gonna work on, oh, this power cord is really nice too. It's like a silicone material. Sweet. Okay, well, I'm gonna work on getting this thing installed at least, and I will show you once it's done. It's a lovely sunny day out here. We have the Victron charger installed right here. This thing is cool. It's fully programmable. You connect to it via Bluetooth or you can set it up on a local area network. It's got built-in security and everything. Bunch of different modes on it. Uh, it shows an indicator right here of what part of the charge cycle it's on. When I plugged it in, it had a firmware update and it has a profile specifically for these Odyssey batteries. So basically we have the output coming down here this is my um, 30 amp double insulated marine grade cable that comes down here. Got spacing, so there's no vibration issues. Comes down here, splits open, goes into each battery bank, and we've got a fuse on each side. I just stuck a, I think it was a 25 amp fuse in there because that's a little bit less than the rating of this part of the wire. But yeah, everything seems to be working good. I'll put a couple of screenshots on the screen, but it logs everything, it counts the number of cycles, tells you how many amp hours are going in and everything. And I just checked with the voltmeter here. Each battery is charging within a tenth of a volt of each other. So yeah, seems to be working good. That was the reason with these things, I, I mentioned it in the video a while back, it got kind of technical. I think I drew something on the screen, but you have to wire these batteries in a very specific way to ensure that all of them are pulling power equally or as equally as possible. Right now, the way it's set up, the end two batteries on each bank are getting pulled a little bit harder than the middle two when the inverter is running under high loads, but it's still within spec and it's not enough to get them out of balance. The way this charger works though, even though we're charging everything in series, it has a way of kind of rebalancing the batteries a bit but regardless, um, at some point, I'm going to get, well, I don't know, I'm trying to decide. It's a lot more wires. But what I was thinking about doing was getting 
a voltmeter basically connected to each one of these so I can monitor all four of the batteries from the inside. I might have to figure that out. That's a lot of excess wiring. It's not really a priority right now, but I'm just keeping an eye on everything. And, oh, I have a wide angle. There we go. I'm just keeping an eye on everything right now and making sure it's working, working the way it should. I think at this point, I'm gonna put the lids back on this, kind of keep an eye on stuff. And then I will show you what's going on inside with our low voltage feed. Okay, right in the middle of a whole bunch of wiring, I'm going through and removing a bunch of the temporary stuff that I put in and putting in the new, more permanent wire. Allow me to show you. So we've got part of our low voltage panel down here. I'm gonna be replacing that power converter with a Victron one. I don't really trust that little five amp thing. There's no fans or anything on it, but we've got a 24 volt fuse panel here, 12 volt one here. This is one of our um, Z-Wave switches. And we've got some wiring running over here to a terminal block. And these wires here feed all the way up and around and through here. And then they pop out basically right here. Quick side note about the wiring. You might be wondering, why are you running everything inside, like on the ceiling and other places like that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, I don't really care about interior design. I mean, obviously I don't want it to look like a rat's nest in here or, you know, too crazy looking, but I honestly don't mind having conduit running around here and there that you can see. But the main reason is I want to be able to get to all the wiring easily. Being in a wheelchair and all that, it makes it a little tricky to crawl around in the luggage bays or back in the equipment mezzanine and hide all the wiring and everything. Plus it's extremely difficult to get everything tied down, down below where everything's made of metal and make sure none of the wires are rubbing or anything like that. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to wiring as far as like safety and fusing and all that stuff. I mean, well, I guess there's good reasons for that. Years ago, back in early 2000, I had a house burned down because of some faulty wiring. There was a place I was renting, but anyways, I go a little bit overboard when it comes to fuse protection and wire abrasion and a bunch of stuff like that. But it also lets me keep an eye on everything and make sure there aren't any problems. That's why I've got all, that's why I've got the voltage monitor installed over here. I don't know if I've showed that yet in the video. But with installing new systems and trying to figure out how everything works, everything needs to be available and visible and accessible to me as also I learn how to do things. Like for example, running an extension cord out here, I have to disconnect the transfer switch and run off the inverter before I fire up the microwave. If I don't, we're gonna see like 1800 watts pulling through that extension cord, and that's not a good thing. So as I'm learning, I'm monitoring everything as I'm installing it because it's all bespoke and not really an off the shelf system. So I just wanna be able to have everything reachable, keep an eye on it all, and that's kinda of why we're running wiring on the ceiling in here. It's out of the way, so it's not dangling over your head. Well, I mean, the temporary stuff, like we've got, we've got an extension cord right here. Everyone that comes in here hits their head on this, but eventually that'll be taken care of. For now though, it clears my head just fine. And that's another reason why we only have two passenger seats in here. I figure it'd be nice to have, you know, one or two people sitting there if I'm driving, but we didn't need four seats like I originally planned. This is my living space and it's set up pretty much only for that. I'm not planning on selling this thing. And if I do, um, whoever buys it is just gonna have to deal with it. It's my living space and every inch of this 301 square feet in here is gonna be used to the maximum. Okay, back to whatever, whatever was going on in the video. And these, I'm still adding more wires, go through this conduit on the ceiling. I will be straightening that up a little bit. But those come down over here and then go into here and go a bunch of places. But right now I've got a bunch of this other wire that I, um, that I had in here just for temporary purposes. As you can see, well, maybe you can see. Uh, change the exposure. There we go. Whoop, that's way too bright. There we are. As you can see, there's kind of a mess of wiring going down through here. So I'm ripping all that out right now. Then we've got some of the stock bus wiring. I removed a bunch of these panels just so I could get access here. They actually used, does anyone know how to turn off the exposure lock on an iPhone? I haven't figured that out. Maybe, no. There we go, apparently you can't do it while you're recording. But in the bus here, they used these ventilation ducts as part of a cable raceway. So I'm kind of reusing those to uh, power some of my light fixtures and whatnot. But anyways, uh, getting all this stuff put together, 
Got things like this fan here that need to run on 12 volts. The, uh, the lighting in here will run on like eight to 32 volts. So I'll just run that on the uh, 24 volt bus. And then out here, we're installing some sort of porch lights, as it were. You can see one of them right here. They're, they point down at an angle. There's gonna be one on the other side of the door as well. So we've got the wire coming through here for that. But anyways, lots of wiring going on. This is uh, definitely in my wheelhouse. I love doing low voltage wiring. So going through and getting uh, cable ties and everything put in and uh, hopefully by this evening, we should have it transferred over to a more permanent solution. <laughs> So this is probably one of the more sketchy installs I'm doing. Um, the ground is a long way down. I'm getting this light over here behind the door installed and we're using the wheelchair lift and also the seat elevator. So <laughs> yeah, something. Okay, time to get back down from here. Okay, we have outside lights now, check it out. Ta-da. Those things actually work pretty good. I wasn't sure at first if they're gonna be too bright, but I mean, it's obviously not completely dark out here yet, but uh, yeah, I think those will work nicely. I was pondering putting just one on, but you know, I figured one's good, two's better, right? <laughs> nice little uh, lit up area here. I'm gonna wait until it gets, I'm gonna wait till it gets completely dark out here and then see what it looks like. It's approximately dinner time, so I figured, why not do some testing? Got some chicken wings. It's gonna take about 45 minutes to cook or so. I thought I'm in the microwave first, just cause why not? But toaster oven, according to the inverter, is pulling around 45% of its total capacity. Now, since I got that new battery charger that a viewer sent, I got it hooked up, it's really cool. It completely logs all of the Everything that's going on, basically. Well, it doesn't it doesn't log discharging current, but it keeps track of how many amp hours are put into the battery. And by extension of that, you tell it how big the batteries are and it can tell you how many cycles you put the batteries through. So I figure running this thing, it's not a constant draw. It's about 1500 watts, but it cycles on and off to keep the temperature going. So I figure that'll give me a good, oh, I should have hooked my power meter up. Eh, too late for that now. <laughs> but anyways, we're just going to test that charger and uh, use that on the back end to see how much power we pulled out of the batteries. Um, yeah, anyways, and also we'll, we'll, yeah, reflections. And also we'll get some dinner out of the deal. <laughs> I still need to put my fold down countertop in here. Right now I'm just using a stack of bins <laughs> to put plates on to do food prep stuff. As you can tell, there's not very much counter space back here at all. Fast forward a couple more days. We've got a 24 to 12 volt converter installed over here now alongside of the battery charger. And still need to clean up some of this wiring once we, uh, once we get the other electrical panel put in. But I've got this thing all wired up now. I've got another fuse going to that and it can provide 20 amps at 12 volts from a 24 volt supply. The cool thing is though, is it has this control wire here. So that thing can be on a switch. It's pretty low standby current, but if you want to completely turn it off, you can install a switch up there to do that. So anyways, uh, I think we've got it pretty much all wired up here. And our 24 volt feed is over here. That's going up through this wire. Then our 12 volt feed is going through here. Actually, I could probably push a little more of that wire up in there. You have to figure out some tie downs for all this stuff, but yeah, I think, uh, I think we should be good to go. All right, well, I'm gonna go inside, get the fuse panel wired up, rip off the old crappy, um, supposedly 20 amp, 24 to 12 volt buck converter and uh, see if it works. This here is supposedly the 20 amp one. I knew it was no gonna be nowhere near 20 amps. And when I bought it, I kind of wasn't really thinking about it. And then I realized I have a lot higher loads that I'm sure that thing can handle. So anyways, we're gonna rip this out. This is our 12 volt, or this is our 24 volt fuse panel, and this is our 12 volt one over here. 
So we are going to go ahead and disconnect this thing. I think it's this five amp fuse here. Yep, there we go. And uh, this is our 24 volt feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all tied up and uh, hooked into our fuse panel. Okay, just checking everything on Home Assistant here. But I do believe we are dangerously close to finish with the wiring in here. It's still a mess, I haven't picked up my tools yet. But we've got our two fuse panels down here, got them labeled finally. And I wound up ditching that little power converter that was here. Anyways, I don't know what I was thinking when I bought that. But I got a little voltmeter set up here. The camera, you can see it flickering on the camera, but it doesn't actually look like that. So I've got a switch here so I can turn that on and off. And then this switch here, I don't know if you can hear in the background, there's a fan noise. This switch turns the 24 to 12 volt converter on and off. And that is now mounted down below, which I showed you earlier. This rat's nest here is gonna get cleaned up, all these extension cords and stuff. I'm gonna be getting another one of these panels, probably one a little bit smaller than that, and mounting it down below as well. And that's gonna be distribution for the shore power, as it were, for the electrical grid. Because there's a few things that I have to have plugged in directly to the grid that we can't run off the inverter, like the battery chargers and the one for the chassis. And I'm sure there's something else I'm not thinking of right now. But anyways, I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up. And um, yeah, I think it's time to finally take a break. I need to get a little uh, handheld vacuum cleaner. A little bit of a mess going on there. These switches are a lot smaller than I thought, but uh, they get the job done okay. And then of course the inverter control panel there and a little weather station thing. This just uses barometric pressure to extrapolate the weather. There's just an outside temperature and humidity sensor. It's nothing fancy. I don't really like how this cord is, but whatever. Oh, one other thing I want to install. Well, I can't really do it today because it's raining outside now and I have a hole saw this size. But this is a little uh, USB charger thing. I think it might also have a voltmeter in the middle, but I want to sink that into the piece of wood back here just so I can have a phone or something sitting here charging. Just kind of a handy little quick charge thing. One of those things I uh, impulse buy on the old Amazon when I was shopping for parts. We've got the microwave running back there. And these two voltmeters don't really agree. This one says 24.3 and this one says 23.6. This one I know was a little bit low before. This one seems a little bit high. They're both cheap import products. So I'm not quite sure which one to believe. Okay, this thing is also a cheap import meter, but uh, let's see what it says uh, in regards to everything else. 24.52. I would think we're probably closer to 24 then. I know that thing always registers low. Hmm, interesting. Our microwave is about to turn off here, so let's see what happens when it does that. Okay, now that's showing 25. These are also showing 25. Hmm, well, it's neither here nor there, I suppose, but meh. Okay, I recorded this once before. We're right between rainstorms here, it's extremely windy, but the footage that I used on my, that I filmed on my phone, you couldn't hear anything I was saying. So we're using the GoPro now. And if there's one thing it's good at, it's mitigating wind noise. Let me show you a couple of things down here real quick. You may have seen this in previous videos, but I don't think I talked about it much. This is just a little carpet blower, a little miniature one, and I've got it mounted down here with some plumber strap. And there's a few holes, actually a bunch of holes that are drilled down here. And what this does is pull air from in here and force it down into the wheelchair lift. So if we turn that on, you can probably hear it. The idea behind that is we're in the Northwest and it rains a lot. And no matter how careful you are, you're gonna end up with water on your tires and this thing is inevitably going to get wet. So instead of leaving it sitting here soaking 
in its moistureness or whatever and rusting while it's inside here, this fan circulates air around and dries everything out while it's in there. The ventilation I was talking about earlier, we've got this little Atwood blower right here and this connects up to the front half of the HVAC on this side. And a problem I was having, or well, something that's handy is having outside ventilation. But when I had this thing hooked up before and it was turned off, we were getting a draft through all of this tubing. By the way, the the floor and every, like it looks like there's a ton of rust and rod and stuff down here. It's actually not nearly as bad as it looks. I will have to replace this plywood section of the floor here probably next season or something like that. But for now, it's actually pretty solid. I just want to say it does. It looks a lot worse than it is. It will still need some attention though at some point. But anyways, we got this little flapper valve installed in here now. It's just kind of dangling at the moment. But this finally allows me to control the ventilation fan. Let's see, where is it? Here we go. So I'll turn this on and show you what that looks like. The spring tension on it is a, is a little bit stiff, but it looks like it opens up at least far enough to get a decent amount of airflow through. But that seems to be getting the job done for now. And if it gets too warm in here during the day, cause you know, we have the greenhouse effect going on, it kind of forces air and circulates everything around. And also, yes, the pellet stove is ventilated from the outside. It actually ventilates from down in this little luggage bay here as well. Once we get this cover put on here, um, that's what that piano hinge is for. But it's basically going to go along the bottom here. We're gonna have some diamond plate that's spring spring loaded and folds down. I'm gonna get some C-channel aluminum to put along the top here, set it up a little bit higher and seal that off. That way when the flap comes up and closes, it'll basically just be metal on metal with a little strip right here, but it'll keep the rain from getting down in there. I considered maybe putting some uh, weather stripping or something on the flap, but the way this works is the lift is going to push it out and force it open. So anything on the edge of that diamond plate will be catching on the lift and we don't want to do that to rip it apart. So I think that's going to be an easier way to do it. Is just have the diamond plate basically come up to here, then have our C channel up above it. So we have a little pocket about eh, maybe half inch deep or something like that, where the rain's not gonna get in there. On the sides, we'll probably just put some L bracket or L angle, angle aluminum, yeah, <laughs> and put that in there. But anyways, I uh, just wanted to show you those couple little things real quick. As with everything, there's a lot of stuff I do that I don't film, but just in case anyone's wondering, I am using Home Assistant to control most everything in here, but I do have backup manual switches for everything. So if for whatever reason that thing isn't running, because it's it's run on a Raspberry Pi, it's independent of any internet connectivity or anything like that. The idea behind that is I keep my own data and it doesn't send up to the cloud. And then you also don't have to worry about external like external stuff going on or you know sometimes like you have smart home stuff and your lights will randomly turn on for no reason. This basically prevents all of that. Okay, it's raining out here. But there are manual backup switches for everything, so we don't have to worry about um, a lot of that stuff going on. I'm gonna hop back inside here, the rain's starting again. But we've covered a lot of stuff here. This was basically the last week or so of uh, all the work I've been doing. I've been going a little bit nuts as per usual. Most of the stuff I'm able to stay in my chair, so it hasn't been too bad. Well, I guess wiring the DC stuff did result, or did require a lot of, uh, <clears throat> did require a lot of floor transfers. Anyways, I say all that to say, next couple days, including today, where I'm editing this video, I'm not gonna do any work on stuff. We know what happens when I overdo things and I don't need to end up in the hospital again. Do need to design some sort of better latching mechanism for this door that allows me to lock it easier. A quick side note, like I said a minute ago, there's a lot of stuff I don't film, and there's some of that that is pretty intentional as far as like security and surveillance and a few other random things that would be better not to put on the internet. But rest assured, there are a number of redundant contingency plans in place as far as like security or emergencies or if the lift fails or things like that. A lot of that I'm not necessarily going to go over, but things are pretty well taken care of as far as a lot of that goes. Sorry, I'm sounding kind of vague there, but anyways. But we're finally getting to the point now where this feels more like a you know, house or a home to live in. I can wake up and cook breakfast, got the computer and everything over here, I can do all my video editing, 
We've got backup power in case the grid's turned off. I do need to get some solar panels. I. So I'm not one of those people that usually likes to ask for money or anything like that, but if you do have some money burning a hole in your pocket, the Amazon wish list is linked down below. I've got some solar panels and some other, other things listed there. The stuff that I can use sooner than later is marked as most wanted on that list, but there's a bunch of other stuff on there for like, you know, 20 bucks or even less. That would be helpful. Anyways, I say all that to say, if you feel like buying any of that stuff, that would be cool. If not, absolutely no worries whatsoever. It's just been truly amazing how many people have been buying stuff from that list and other things that I need to help with this project and get things moving along. So I really appreciate all the help from everyone. And also just watching the videos, I, I'm doing the YouTuber thing. Just watching the videos helps as well. Um, we're getting more and more subscribers now. And as things grow, I'm just trying to figure out how all this stuff works. I've started getting a bunch of like requests from emails for like sponsors and all that. I'm not really planning on doing anything like that. I mean, I have been in talks with Ryobi. I've got a bunch of their tools down here. So something like that, I might be potentially willing to do some sort of like brand deal or something with, but you're not gonna hear me talk about those earbuds or the VPN stuff. Ooh, the power just turned off. All the backup power supplies just fired up. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. It's been a really fun project. I don't regret any of this. We're, we're getting closer to the end. Obviously, we still have to do all the plumbing and all that, but um, I don't know. I'm finally feeling good now. Uh, the last eight to 10 months have been kind of turbulent, but last couple of weeks or so, I, I feel like myself and uh, actually kind of getting a place to live here. <laughs> Anywho, enough babbling. I will catch you guys in a couple of days. I'm gonna try and get another video up before Thursday. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but whatever. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Y'all are amazing. You rock my face off. Santa's actually going to smear all the parcels and sanitizer and just drop them down your chimney. So you're going to have to dig them out of the fireplace yourself. He's not coming down touching our skanky COVID socks.